It's Joel with the East Coast Rep Rap Festival with probably one of the most bombshell 3D printers in recent memory, the Magneto X. Hey, Mark. Hey, good to see you, Joel. Good to see you. You just dropped this out of nowhere. And one of the things that really catches my eye are these linear motors. How did you go about making this happen? Well, uh, we started working on this project about a year ago. Uh, we were, the engineering team were locked down with me uh, in Shenzhen, and uh, we just started watching a lot of Voron videos. Uh, As one does. We couldn't go out, but we could order parts uh, from Alibaba, so we started building uh, a, couple of one, a couple of them. And then we started asking ourselves, hey, maybe try to do something a little bit different with the motor. And that's kind of how we started down the road. First of all, that's amazing. Being in Shenzhen and being able to just be, I want to order parts, they probably show up the next day. You were able to build this over the last year and then you just dropped it. And how did you even come about with this idea? Because Piopoli historically has been a resin 3D printer company. Uh, yes, we have. Um, we actually started asking a lot of questions to users, but we didn't want to give away what we were working on. So we started asking questions that we were going to put servo motors in other 3D printers and just get some feedbacks. And the feedbacks we got were generally, uh, it's too expensive, uh, it's overbuilt, you don't need that kind of precision in 3D printing. But then we start getting more feedbacks about, okay, you know, if you're able to have a cl true close through resistance and, and also think about how clean the design can be, it's still a worthwhile things to do. So we started iterating on the design. Because there's no offshore parts you can buy to build the printer, so you kind of have to build the printer and make a motor for it, and then kind of you have to kind of iterate back and forth. Wait, wait, wait. So you from the ground up, you weren't just taking off the shelf parts. You went through every process of the machine and, and just kind of from the ground started building the thing that you wanted. Right. Uh, so we, we actually did start with the offshore parts, but we couldn't find any because most of the linear motors were made for uh, industrial CNC machines and oh, specifically the linear motors. Right, the linear motors, and for like for big SMT machines. Uh, so those are very expensive and huge. Kind of think about okay, so uh, think of that like um, making a race car, like be, uh, bringing a race car performance part into an everyday car. Okay. Um, you don't need all that performance because you have to drive it on a daily road. But you, so you could give us some of the performance, but also perhaps think about, okay, how you can reduce the cost, also make it small enough and also easy enough to produce so that it could be put in a desktop form. So that was really kind of the, the core of the challenge. It seems you met the challenge because this thing is moving along really well. One of the concerns I believe someone online said was being able to get linear motors at that price point, because you have this at $13.99 pre-sale, that price point is, is amazing, and they were worried about whether or not they could perform at the accuracy needed. And it looks like it can. Right, um, and there's actually a printer part. So I think that's a really good question, where how do you balance the performance, um, the price point, and also how easy these can be uh, manufactured. And so we got the precision down to about three micron. So three micron. micron. So most of the linear motors, industrial ones, are down to one micron. So this is not as <laughs> precise as those. But but to get from three to one, it's it's an exponential amount of money, right? It is. And also, it's really would be a, an overkill for current extrusion system. So uh, one thing that really helps us develop this trend was uh, using standard clipper firmware. Um, the way they've kind of virtualized the hardware makes it, you, you don't really need to get down to the hardware so programmers can actually start thinking about how they set up the printer without getting into a lot of nitty gritty details and that really speed up the development for that. Yeah. Well, and I like that using Clipper, you've actually supported the Clipper project and you're, you're very proud of that fact. We're talking with uh, the Kevin, Kevin O'Connor who's the uh, founder of the uh, Clipper project and he mentioned that to be able to be a sponsor for Clipper project we have to follow, everyone has to follow the uh, open source uh, standard. And, and we say, yes, we are going to release the source code for the, uh, for the Clipper we use. All right, it's, it's shaking a bit. <laughs> well, yeah, it's shaking because it moves so fast. So Clipper is going to give you input shaping. And, does, yeah. and, and Clipper is going to uh, allow you to do that rapid development like you were right. saying. Okay, so we know the software here. Why don't we get into the hardware of this? We've talked about the linear motors. You've talked about it running Clipper. Right. We've got 400 by 300 by 300. 300. Right. And the reason for, for that is because you can see how the, the, you know, the, the one axis is stacked on top of the other one. So that means this axis is handling more load than that one. So this is actually a, thicker, a bigger route than that. It makes sense to just utilize and make it a little bit longer. So that's why it's, uh, it's not 300 by 300 or 400 by 400, <laughs> it's 300 by 400. 
Tell me a little bit about the extrusion system. What do you have inside of here? This is our Lancer extruders, and um, it has a uh, 90 newtons of uh, extrusion force, and it can move filaments about 30 millimeter per second. Uh, and it also has a swappable uh, melt zone length, so that you could, depending on the speed and the quality you want, you can use a longer melt zone for a faster print speed or a little bit shorter one for perhaps less streaming. 30 millimeters per second for extrusion. Now, we're talking about the actual ex the extruder motor, not necessarily the speed of the machine, because obviously it's going much faster. It is, so that's the speed of the filament that can move as the fastest by the extruders. Which is very fast. It is, and the, and, and the flow rate is about 60, the max flow rate is 60 um, millimeter cubic per second. That's really fast as well. Yes, uh, but you will need to use a longer <laughs> melt zone for that, yeah. yes. I want to ask you something. There's no filament currently. What happened? Well, it, this, this is our engineering prototype, and it took a hit on its way from Shenzhen to here. Yeah. Uh, so the gear is a little off, but we do have the printer part from the same printer. Um, and yeah, it, it took about two, two and a half hours. This is a uh, PI carbon fiber. It's light. I, lo I love this material. It is, it is. Um, and we, we're looking to print like a, a lightweight ASA, so that it would be good for uh, uh, prop makers and also custom makers. This has been th th this has been amazing, and I I'm really happy that you released this and you're talking about this at the East Coast RepRap Festival. I feel like this is going to be one of those things where once once the pre-orders are fulfilled and people have it, yeah. there's going to be a lot of really happy people with with this machine. It seems to be quiet. It seems to move fast. Uh, print quality is great. Uh, what's the timeline right now if someone pre-orders for getting a machine? So we're looking to start the production uh, in mid-October, and we'll start shipping out to our warehouse uh, around mid-November. Pre-orders could actually arrive at some people's houses before Christmas. That, that's what we're aiming for. Uh, we do want to make sure the production quality is meeting our expectation and also uses expectation. So that will be our primary goal in terms of shipping and shipment. Mark, there's going to be a lot of really interested people in this, I'm sure. $13.99 pre-order, $19.99 retail once that's done. Right. Look in the camera there and tell everybody where they can go to find out more about the Magneto X. You can find out more at popoly.net or you can email us at uh, support at popoly.net. We'll put a link down in the description as well. Mark, this has been amazing. I hope you have a wonderful East Coast Rep Rap Festival and uh, we wouldn't it wouldn't be appropriate unless we seal this with a high five, right? Okay, well, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Right. Get ready. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. And as always, high Thanks. five. High five. <laughs>